this little car was, we won a lot of races, but this car was number two in the nation in 1963, which was, that was really something in its day. We're, we're going to plug in the starter and we'll get oil pressure first and then we'll give it a squirt of, of uh, airplane gas and fire it up. And we'll run it on alcohol for about two and a half to three minutes to get the temperature up and then about the time you think it isn't going to sound good, you'll be surprised what it does. Look in the starter, you know. And back in the day, we pushed these to start. I'm a machinist, so I put a, a starter inside the belt. I put a, a shimmy ring gear on it, and I use a high torque jig starter to, to spin it over. This was, was my most favorite car, and that's why we re it's restored exactly like we raced it. It really is a neat deal, especially, you know, growing up here and went to school here and, and uh, my first drag race, and I look at this place and I remember when we had night drags here and there was no lights in the pits. They had one floodlight behind the starting line. And you could see real good on the track, but as you notice, the shutoff area drops off. Well, when you drop off, the light stays straight. So you drop up into a hole where you can't see anything. Got a question for you. This is test time. What's a peregrine? Peregrine is too green. Oh, okay. Well, it's a bird. It's a very fast bird. How fast is that bird, he says. And uh, when it's diving, it's called a stoop. When it's stooping, it can go as fast as 220 miles an hour. Well, way back when, uh, they started uh, nicknaming drivers, you know, the snake, the mongoose, uh, the mongrel. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Well. Somebody threw the word peregrine out and it stuck, and with great justification. This is a guy who got his start here in Bakersfield, California, working with the likes of, oh, uh, Roger Colburn, Ernie Hashem, Chester Martin, that's just a few of them. He gained his real fame with Chuck Doss and Del Clayton, and won the 65 PDA meet, now believe this, over 150 other top fuel cars. You can add Warren and Crow, you can add Tony Waters, Bill Crossley, the list goes on and on of people that are honorary worked with. He moved up to Washington State immediately, annexed the Division VI Pro Comp title, and right now is proud to be seen at the controls of the Dawson Clayton car at most cackle fests held 
anywhere in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, if you would, our very own bird of prey, Mr. Wayne King. Did you ever expect that you'd be standing up on the stage holding a wally in your hand at this stage of life? I won one in the 70s when we won the division in Seattle up there, but this is a cool deal. Uh, it just, I, I figured I'd be dead before we got to me. <laughs> this is a neat thing. I, I, I'm really humbled and I'm, I'm so pleased. I have my wife and my daughter and my granddaughter and so many friends. I got Fast Jack and God, this is my, my best friend. One of them here is Gary Gwynn and his son Tim. Without him, I wouldn't be here or the car. But uh, Bakersfield, somebody said, how'd you get in drag race, Wayne? I lived in Bakersfield. And, I, and my best friends were Roger and James, and God, I miss them guys dearly. But there's something, I want to say something, and I, don't take me wrong on this. There's a group of guys, old guys, most of them are dead now, called the Smokers of Bakersfield. Let me finish. They continued to run nitromethane when it was dangerous. I really believe if they hadn't have kept running the nitromethane, we wouldn't be here tonight. Uh, every time I see the big show and the thundering of those big cars, I think back you know, Bud DeVicke and Tony Waters, there's so many of them are gone, but God, I'm so proud to be from Bakersfield. As what you should be. Well, I, you know, I, I was 19 when I drove this thing. So, you know, I was a you know young kid and loved speed, I still do, but it's, uh, then we took it for granted so much. And uh, it's like the first time we came here to do a cackle fest. I hadn't been in one of these things in 40 years. And we pushed down from the top end and to see the spokes, the lights on the spokes, and you hear the engine turning over and you bleed the injectors and flip the switch on. And I got tears in my eyes, not from the fuel, but from the fun times of, you know, some of the best times of my life. That's when I met my wife, Peggy, was in drag racing. I did really love doing this. This was so much fun. And the sad thing is, it's like when Poncho raced, you know, those days two or three guys could go have a beer and, hey, I got an engine. Well, I got a frame. Let's put it together. Well, I got a trailer. Hell, let's go to Lions Saturday night. And that's how so many of these teams were formed. But that will never happen again. <laughs> 